Hello, D class. Did you know the U.S. Postal Service tells you not to use the blue uh, mailboxes anymore? Really? Yeah, no, they they made an announcement announcement because uh, criminals are uh, using them to steal stuff. Criminals. Shut up! I can't. You know I can't say certain words. I know it's it's. I. You, you know me, I, I'm never meaning any disrespect, but it's just the way you end up saying things, it's always really funny to me. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, bad people keep uh, stealing shit. So, you're, they tell you not to use it anymore. Criminals. So now, Hatchet, you got to learn something new. Wait a minute. Bright? Yeah? Bernie Sanders has 43 viewers and you only have one. I don't give a fuck. Get your game face on. Fuck you're you. never gonna reach your... You're never gonna reach your follower... ...goal at this rate. Bernie Sanders taking all your... <laughs> Oh my god, shut up. <laughs> Brittany Sanders is is siphoning away all the SCP enjoyers. He is the new uh one of the new uh seven thousand SCP that just steals viewers from other Twitch channels. We're not sure nah, why the, he's as far as an SCP. <laughs> nah the new nah the new the new 7,000 SCP that is Bernie Sanders is literally just a, a really progressive old man who is immortal and can never be gotten rid of from the Congress because he's good. I was tempted to find a picture of Bernie Sanders and put it on this tier list. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> well, I mean, if, if we did, I forget all the... Wait, can you... uh? Discord stream. Uh, yeah. I've forgotten all of the tears. I guess let's just speculate. Can... Where would you put it's Bernie reassign. Sanders? What the fuck? A spood tier, only one. Certain group, city, country, continent, world changing, XK, and ZK. Hmm. Well, then, uh, Bernie Sanders would obviously be in Spood tier. <laughs> What's actually fucked up, if we did put a picture of Bernie Sanders, they would be right next to the wheelchair. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! That is so fucked. I didn't realize that till now. That is, we're not so doing this. Fucked. We're we uh, cut cut the cut cut the video. We're out of here. <laughs> anyway, are we ready for the first SCP? I'm never ready. All right. This is SCP fifteen seventy four. Didn't you hear me? I said I'm never ready. Fuck it. Fuck you. I don't give a fuck. Right. <laughs> SCP-1574 oh, yeah. is a roughly spherical object of extraterrestrial origin, 1.63 meters in diameter, and capable of moving in any motion. SCP-1574 has never been directly observed due to, due to a perceptive altering effect it emits on any living subject capable of observing it. This causes a subject to believe that they are perceiving a variety of other objects partially logged in this document. This is believed to be a cloaking effect to allow SCP-1574 easy access to surveillance locations without being seen. Analysis by other means has shown SCP-1574's actual shape, but testing to observe it further is ongoing. December 15th, 1927. Appearance. Meteorite. Notes. First sighting of SCP-1574. September 2nd, 
1935. Miniature storm cloud in, in the Florida Keys. Notes. Wandered into a, the path of a hurricane believed to have da damaged SCP-1574 to an unknown degree. May 28, 1940. Appearance. A small explosion, constantly changing its shape, although the general size was equivalent to SCP-1574. Notes. Generated heat and force equivalent to an actual explosion of the size. June 17, 1956. White picket fence located in... Oh wait, sorry. Appearance. White picket fence located in suburban residential area within Miami, Florida. Notes. Would replace portions of other fences in order to blend in. Plus no significant alarm to civilian population due to lack of movement. October 14th, 1974, uh, 1964. Appearance, a Volkswagen Type 2 automobile painted with hippie colors. Notes. Suspended itself underwater in a lake within redacted Florida, USA. March 16th, 1976. Disco ball with size comparable to SCB-1574. Suspended itself above a pine forest in redacted Cuba. Redacted. Data expunged. Data expunged. December 26, 2004. Parents. A violently throbbing body of water, approximately twice SCP-1574 size. Notes. Occasional wildlife such as fish or vegetation could be seen within the water. August 27th, 2005. Appearance. A miniature storm cloud similar to how it appeared on se September 2nd, 1935. Notes. Nothing. January 20th, 2009. Appearance. Manifested as the disembodied head of American President Barack Hussein Obama. A Notes. Manifested underground within a mine in redacted Mexico. September 18th, 2012. Appearance appeared as a miniature version of the star 3214 Hybris, which had been studied in the same area SV 1574 had manifested in. Notes displayed anomalous properties identical to S SCP 255, resulting in redacted casualties to observation team. The movement pattern displayed by SCP-1574 is erratic and apparently random, usually taking it through rural areas of Mexico and Cuba and waters bordering, bordering those states. It has been known to make brief excursions to other states bordering the Gulf of Mexico, but those occur more rarely. It moves at a constant speed of 20 kilometers per hour with Altitude varying between 1 and 16 meters off the ground. As of redacted, no major population centers have been targeted by SCP-1574, but this has not been eliminated as a possibility. Various radio broadcasts have been recorded to emit from SCP-1574, usually directly following an alteration in its appearance. Prior to 1935, these broadcasts were incomprehensible to Foundation Xenocryptographers. However, since September 3, 1935, all transmissions made by SCP-1574 have used terrestrial languages spliced together from various media programs. SCP-1574 was first observed on 
December 15, 1927, as a meteorite headed towards Earth. Following impact, SCP-1574 anomalous properties were observed by the Foundation personnel, leading to its classification as an anomalous object. SCP-1574 was documented as an SCP on November 23, 1941, and classified as Euclid. Following SCP-1574's manifestation on September 18, 2012, it has been reclassified as Keter. Alright, there you go. That. Well, there isn't an addendum, but I wasn't sure if you wanted me to read it for more information if you need it. Yeah, it's like, as of right now, like... I, I don't see how this thing's dangerous in the slightest. Alright. Addendum 1574-A. S. Alright. Date. December 15th, 1927. Message. Incomprehensible. Notes. Nothing. September 2nd, 1935. We are. Fear. Cannot continue. Upwards can velocity stop do not panic report to the people can hear us advise assistant to all notes spliced together from franklin delano roosevelt's fireside chats may 28th 1940 message violence has erupted not result of mind searcher, but of normal conventions to world. Search continues for savior. Notes. Broadcasts in German, taken from various propaganda broadcasts. June 17th, 1956. Message. Well, we sure are still here. Send aid soon. Wow. The colors are big. The biggest is out there. Notes. Taken from various children cartoon programs. October 14th, 1964. Message. Attempts to groove and have flunked. War is on still. Present not detected. Notes taken from redacted. March 16th, 1976. Message. Decay from planet. Unsure if it is from prep. Pep. But continue. One day you may find us again. Note. Taken from various daily news programs. Redacted. Message, data expunged. Notes, data expunged. December 26, 2004. Message. It's causing disaster. Everywhere. People are being crushed riding on a wave. It was caused by the search party. Data will be seen at 5. Notes. Taken from various disaster relief organizations. September 18th, 2012. We have found it. Personnel are advised to reach evacuation location. Please help us. It's going to kill us. Please send help before it comes to you. Notes. <laughs> Voice and broadcast found to be identical to Agent Redacted, who had been killed by SCP-1574. Note that no evidence exists that Agent Redacted broadcasts these words. And that's it. When 1874, is that the number of this current SCP? Yes. Okay, so it can kill people. Yeah. I have absolutely no idea what to do with this thing. Yeah. One of the funny things I find funny about it is that it 
at one point manifested as the disembodied head of American Bl President Barack yeah. Hussein Obama. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> like, it's normally trying to... Wait, was that the same time when we had redacted info? No. Okay. Yeah, it's like... Normally, it's trying to blend in with surroundings, but no, you know what? Today, I'm feeling like being a disembodied head of a former U.S. president. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> the fuck? Uh, I, I just don't know what to do with this thing. Like, it doesn't seem to hurt people much. It just floats around and does weird shit and makes broadcasts. Like, oh, it's it's even... just a podcast creator. <sighs> sure. It's like, like, even if, like, everything that it's saying is, like, correlated to something bad happening, I don't even think that it's this SCP causing those bad things. Based upon what we have, this thing literally seems to just be a drone. Yeah. So, like, where where do we put the occasionally kills people drone? Probably, on, uh, probably only one. For Chus, certain groups. Chu says SCP Joe Rogan. Oh, gross. I just, I just like before this, I was watching. Some of Cyrus's videos about the Alex Jones trial. I don't yeah. need to remember people like that. Yeah. So you say only one or a certain group? We have a lot in certain group. Put it in only one. Alright. Oops. No, put that there. There we go. Also, did you come in and immediately start playing shrimp? Apparently. Cool. There we go. Alright. Playing shrimp. Ready like for the next cards. SCP? I, I mean, yeah. Alright. I'm not going anywhere. Uh. Good, we're... Uh, next SCP is the military can. The what? Yeah, y'all understand. The mil? No, no, I'm, I'm. Yeah, the military can. Uh, okay. You know, y'all understand. All right. Oh wait, no, not military can. Military barrel. I'm sorry. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I just called a barrel a can. <laughs> <Those> are, <laughs> just you shrunk down the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> what is a barrel but a very large can? Uh, yeah. Anyway, on to the SCP. SCP fifteen eighty three designates a collect designates as a collection of metallic barrels. Designed for use in supplying fallout shelters. It re reproduce images and re oh, in reproduce images, the exteriors feature the informational text originally printed on them when viewed directly. The labels read Note from the Department Note from Department of Defense. Why did I have so much trouble saying department? This device can be used in your shelter or other places of refuge to perfect, to perfect, protect. My fucking tongue is fucking up. God damn it! <laughs> to protect yourselves and your families from the horror of nuclear warfare, simply enter your family into the shelter of choice and open your container. Safety will follow. You will be protected and. Comforted with your family bit by bit. Held safely until ev every other seeker of comfort is too. Then we come out, rebuilding a burned world together. 
blood and stone, flesh to wood, sweat and concrete. Build in your image. When opened, instances of SCP-1583 will re release thin, white, thread-like organisms, which will bind together in order to form a large appendage. SCP-1583 will attempt to seize living subjects and bring them within its mass. Following this, the thread-like portions of, of its mass will disassemble the subject's body. Outer epidermis will be destroyed within 14 seconds of contact followed by muscles and other tissue. The subject's schedule structure will slowly dissolve over a period of two to three hours. There is no observed limit to the quantity of this mass. SV-1583 is capable of releasing with containment breaches and redacted reaching almost 600 meters above the, the instance. This organism is capable of opening SV-1583 on its own if there is nothing preventing it from exiting on the other side. These entities are, poss are possible to be destroyed through application of extreme heat, but if additional instances of SCP-1583 breach containment or the containment by other organizations fa fails, the energy required to neutralize SCP-1583 entities increases. In addition, the mass and speed of the of emergence has increased over time, currently being at 200 kilograms of matter every 15 seconds. Four instances of SCP-1583 have been destroyed by by the Foundation since initial containment. If an instance of SCP-1583 is opened, the pressure exerted by the organisms within all other SCP-1583 instances will increase proportionally requiring additional pressure to prevent containment breaches. This new increase in force will be permanent in no way of reducing or relieving it has been found. The destruction of emergent SB-1583 entities have been found to have no effect on the new forces produced by other instances of SB-1583. SB-1583 was recovered on September 19, 1989, after an entity breached within the redacted group campus. Foundation agents were able to destroy the emergent entities and contain 20 instances of SB-1583. During this time, stored instances of SB-1583 suddenly increased its in pressure and breach, causing the destruction of Site-57. SCP-1583 was reclassified as Keter. On November 15, 1999, Foundation assets were able to confirm that the GOC possessed instances of SCP-1583. The GOC is believed to have breached one instance of, in a 1990 destruction attempt, which caused the initial Foundation reclassification. GOC personnel were contacted and the current joint containment procedures were negotiated. With the Palm Agreement established precedent for joint containment of anomalies. There you go. So they're just big, big barrels that when opened. Try to vore everything. Hey, chew. <laughs> well, chew's not into digestion. These things digest you really quick. Yeah. Also, chew. Oh, <laughs> Fuck oh. y'all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I love how chew's message is. Is that where the where the military shits out its unnecessarily high budget? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's where that's where the U.S. military budget goes into uh, making boar cans. <laughs> Shoot, redeem, fake you, Hatchet. Very good. So, what do you think, Hatchet? Also, hey, Aderna. Oh, hi, Aderna. We're talking about boar cans. <laughs> they were here. 
Um, Oh, is it Jerry? No, that's a Chew. Hello, Chew. I will not allow the slander. What slander? Um, the the lies. You're always eating your your audience. <laughs> you know, you could just take it to court. You're into you're into war. Mm, don't know what you're talking about. I don't even if know you what that is. Listen, listen, Chu. I, I, I have ev I have tons of evidence. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, Chu. If you have an issue with us saying us and saying this, then go ahead and bring us up on charges of defamation. See how see how that uh see how that court court case works out for you. No. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially when he, you know, such such yeah. such like. Especially when we have so much evidence at our fingertips. Yeah. Anyway, on with the SCP. Uh, I do have a bit more information. Uh, I forgot to say its nickname. It it only makes us stronger. That's its nickname. Okay. Not quite sure what that means, but okay. Yeah. Um, so based upon everything we've talked about, um, these things seem pretty damn dangerous because if they just keep like having increasingly more powerful uh, vor arms come out, uh, that could easily we get out of hand very quickly. Yeah, and it also said in your article that it can o open it, its lid by itself. So there's no living things around it for a while, or there's no way of keeping it down. Yeah, like... Um... I guess the question is, do we have, like... Did, did they mention whether there was a the theoretical cap to how big they can get? Uh, let me look at it again. I think it sounded like it got really big at one time. Let me see. Yeah, there was one time where its limb reached 600 meters above it. Jesus. So, I, I don't know if it has a limit. That's just the highest has been recorded. Uh... I, I'd probably put it around continent. Yeah. Seeing how they had to ally with an enemy to <laughs> deal with it. It's less that they had to ally with them and more that the GOC fucked up, realized they fucked up and are like, okay, yeah, maybe we should just kind of like not mess with these fucking barrels of four doom again. <laughs> you think they would learn a lesson from the chair? <laughs> eh, well, you know what I mean by the chair, that. right? Yes, I know. Yeah, okay. I remember the chair. Yeah. All right. Everyone ready for the next one? Does this one also have to do with Vor? Uh, no. But it... Hush. Yeah, but it is actually one of my favorite SCPs. This is SCP-1591, The Fallen Star. Mm. SCP-1591 is a glass sculpture in the shape of a star, surrounded by 14 sheets of stained glass. The central... Sculpture weighs 1.2 kilograms, 
with the indiv individual panels weighing 12 kilograms each. All components of SCP-1591 are suspended approximately 6 meters above the ground through as as yet unknown mechanism. To date, efforts to activate the levitation of either the sculpture or the panels has been unsuccessful. SCP-1591 constantly produces light with gradually increasing brightness and intensity. Any surface illuminated by SCP-1591 will appear to become inconsistently transparent and if not removed, any affected matter will disappear from the observable space. Non-solid matter that makes contact with light produced by SCP-1591 will begin to rapidly decrease in temperature until it takes on a solid form. SCP-1591 is immune to its own effect. Organisms will retain consciousness and mobility while being affected by SCP-1591 although the ability to create speech will be lost. Affected organisms will usually react in a panicked ma manner, attempting to flee from SCP-1591's light as quickly as possible. If an affected organism ceases being exposed to SCP-1591's light, it will quickly fade and vanish. Further research of this effect has been inhibited by the continued destruction of observational equipment, SCP-1591 has been exposed to lights of greater intensity than its own will cause the rate at which its brightness increases to be reduced by 10,000 LX to 50,000 LX every 24 hours. The intensity of the light produced by SCP-1591 does not decrease over distance. SCP-1591 was recovered in 1940 from Redacted Italy, where it, it was in the possession of known Serpent's Hand operatives. During initial containment, SCP-1591's effect was now negligible, taking over 82 hours to completely destroy a 3x4x3-meter wooden block. It was contained within Site 77's safe containment wing, focusing light on SCP-1591 was discovered to prevent its effect from spreading. Initially, the light required for containment of SCP-1591 was relatively low. In February of 1941, Site 77 was partially damaged by Allied bombing raids. These bombs caused by SCP-1591's containment to be breached, resulting in most of the remaining portions of Site-77 being destroyed. After control of the facility was re-established, SCP-1591 was discovered to be significantly more hazardous and reclassified as Euclid. The second containment breach resulted in Site-77 being severely damaged and the loss of redacted personnel. It has then been changed to Keter class. There you go. So it's 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 a it's a levitating ball that disintegrates matter. Yep. Mm. I I may have missed it. Did did they say that there was like a uh limit to how much it affects now, and is if it was, if it was growing? Uh, no, it's it, it only said it, it, it's light. The light it produces. If you if it touches anything living, it will be disintegrated. Was it living or just anything in general? Uh, it said organisms, and let's see, I said good. I mean, the only time it doesn't talk about disintegration is from non solid matter when it makes contact with light will rapidly decrease in temperature until it takes on a solid form. 
No, I mean, uh, like, does it... You said organisms, which means living things. It, does it disintegrate things that aren't living? Uh... Oh, uh, wait, uh... During... During initial containment, SCP-1590 was affected with ne negligible, taking over 82 hours to completely destroy a 3x4x3-meter wooden block. Okay, so... It can... disintegrate basically anything. Yeah. The light's getting more intense every time we slip up. Yeah. What the hell is LX, though? LX? Yeah, it said 10,000 LX to 50,000 LX every 24 hours. Is that, like, a form of light measurement? I'm guessing. Let me just go look. Uh, LX. Light. Yeah, you can kind of see why this is one of my favorites, because it's so interesting. Oh, god damn it. What? I, I typed in LX light, and it took that to mean L and light. Yakami from Death Note. So, <laughs> when I put in LX light, the first thing that shows up is a bunch of fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Measurement. Oh, <laughs> LX light measurement. Uh, okay, yeah. So it's ba it's lux. Ah, uh, okay. U human unit of illuminance. Okay, so it is light measurement. Yeah, per unit area is the international system of units SI. It is equal to one lumen per square meter. In photo in photometry. This is used as a measure of the intensity as perceived by the human eye of light that hits or passes through a surface. So, honestly, I dare say this thing uh, could easily end the world if left unchecked. Yeah. So, I, mean, I the would. The foundation is fucked up twice. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, at least one of those we know for a fact can't be their fault because right. it was allied bombing raids. Yeah. But that's that's just that's just the Goberman's fault. But Wait, where, where was Site Forty Seven? Oh, Site Forty Seven is in Italy. Yeah, that's that makes sense. But yeah, I'd put that in XK. Also, you... I will simply uh oh, go ahead, Brian. I was gonna say, what do you think, Adorno? I we should probably hear everyone's opinions. True, true. <laughs> and other stuff. Man. You you go to Derna? Yeah. Can I get like a short like explanation of what it is before I well it's like a, recap. It's a glass sculpture that disintegrates anything it it's like touches if left unchecked. Actually it's not even disintegrates. It just alt F fours matter. Yeah it just alt F fours. So it just deletes basically yeah it just yeah. Like when the when its light hits things, uh, after a certain period of time of that thing not moving, it will gradually become more transparent until the thing is just gone. I, wait, would that uh, actually okay. be painful? Because it, it said it like organisms have been going through it. Does that mean they use D class? I don't all? know. Probably don't use D class. They probably try. Okay, so the first the first thing is they probably tried like with with animals first. They probably tried to make sure they don't they use C class as little as necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I said. 
And uh, the thing that I was saying is that uh, they can stop it from eliminating things by uh, consistently keeping it showered in outside light. Yeah. But every time it's like every time that containment procedure has lapsed, uh, it's gotten significantly stronger. So I was thinking it's probably an XK. So why don't they like? So they like keep it. Do they like keep it outside or something? I'm guessing that's not enough light, and plus that would be too inconsistent with nighttime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They could shoot into the sun. (laughs) I don't think they can get close to it to do that. Yeah, no, they can. They just have to like shoot into the sun very quickly. <laughs> they they have to like. Uh... Well, the, well, there's an issue with that. There probably wouldn't oh, yeah, be yeah. enough lumens or lux on it at the at when it's out in the depths of space so there's but the there's the potential of it getting exponentially more powerful out there to the point where the sun isn't enough to stop it and then it just all to force the sun <laughs> oh my god so we get rid of the sun okay yeah it's just like i mean it's better no than more sitting d class into it no you don't you don't need to do uh-huh. that right just Go to your room. No, I was saying it's better to, to shoot that towards the sun than shoot T class at the sun. <laughs> Wait, it's better to No, uh, it's it's not better to shoot that towards the sun. Are you kidding me? If there's a potential that it all have forced the sun, then that would kill all of humanity. Or would it uh-huh. or would it become the new sun? What? Right? If it be okay. If, if it, it became, became if it became the new sun, it would get rid it would get rid of all the entire solar system. Yeah, actually come to think of it, if this thing has no logical limits, it might actually be ZK. You mean yeah, yeah, ZK, yeah. Like reality or universe ending. I mean it didn't say it had a limit. Yeah, like, this thing could possibly be ZK. Okay, I guess I'll move it then. Yeah, I think I think ZK. But also, I will simply note, uh, oh, Chu will be back in a few minutes. Oh, it's, gonna, it's less fun to say this while Chu's away. But in, in chat, after we mocked Chu for Vor, uh, 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 Chu Chu angrily goes, "Are you kidding me? Why universe? Why?" And then apparently, uh, Vor was trending on Twitter when Chu opened. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, the the thing to take away from that is, uh, that almost certainly was specifically trending for Chu, which means that the algorithm of Twitter has noted that Chu would be interested. In the trend of four. Uh, yeah. You ready for the next SCP? That's super my, dangerous. My 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 Festus is here. Is Festus an SCP? Maybe. But anyway, this SCP is extremely dangerous and has the most terrifying name, Hatchet. You're gonna say some incredibly basal shit, just SCP-1616, also known as Nibbles. Nibbles? <laughs> Wait, back up. What did you say? Nibbles. N- Nibbles, I- okay. N-I-B-B-L-E-S. At first, like, I thought you said nipples. Nipples. <laughs> I was about to say, oh, great. We're all... Oh, fuck. There's two Keter classes stuck to me. Festus has eight Keter classes on him. What do we do? <laughs> ah, Festus! Ow. The uh, Keters, they're making Festus go loco. Uh, Not nipples. Anyway. Hey, Bookworm. Hey, Bookworm. <laughs> uh, 
All right. SCP-1616 is a common hamster with no genetic abnormalities. The subject behaves as a normal hamster would. Anomalous properties of SCP-1616 present themselves when SCP-1616 begins feeding. One or both of SCP-1616's cheeks will expand, attaining an object previously seen by SCP-1616. If the object in question is inorganic, SCP-1616 will remove the object from its mouth and ignore it. Similar feeding has been observed for most organic materials, save for wood, which SCP-1616 will not completely consume, but return to and nibble like a common hamster would for dental upkeep. SCP-1616 typically consumes organic matter, which appears in its cheek over a course of time, if possible, SCP-1616 has been observed producing carrots, hamster feed, candy, and su substantial amounts of flesh from its cheeks. SCP-1616's cheeks will expand to accommodate any matter it produces, in one case expanding to accommodate for the size of one baby elephant weighing 105 kilograms. SCP-1616 does not suffer any trauma from the expansion as a tissue appears to maintain density and composition as it expands. SCP-1616's jaw will retract and expand to remove an object from its mouth. If the object in question is unable to be moved by SCP-1616's power alone, it will usually be emancipated by SCP-1616 moving back backwards away from the object. If SCP-1616 lacks the ability to move away from that subject due to lack of traction, it will simply retract its jaw and regurgitate it, pushing itself away. It's assumed that SCP-1616 has difficulties consuming a still living object depending on its size. In the case of biological matter emancipated from Organic subjects' nervous tissue seems to respond as if it were still in the host body. Subjects report feeling pain as if it were happening under normal circumstances, and nervous tissue is not disconnected at all, suggesting as a sort of connection between the inside of SCP-6060's mouth and the host subject. Due to its nature, it is recommended SCP-1660 not be exposed to any photographs or illustrations, especially those considered dangerous. It is not confirmed whether or not SCP-1616's feeding process will be harmful or successful to SCP-1616 with hazardous objects. SCP-1616 will emancipate small portions of matter from cell wall or it's entirely at any given time. This occurrence is more likely if the object is disturbed. Test Log 1616-T6 Dr. Breen Place SCP-1616's cage onto the main testing table and release the lever. D-10293 releases the latch on SCP-1616's cage SCP-1616 leaves the cage and onto the table. Hmm. D-Class. Okay, he's kind of cute. Dr. Breen, <laughs> continue observing 1616 until instructed otherwise. D-Class. Can I pet, the, pet him? Dr. Breen, I don't see why not. D-10293 picks up SCP-1616 and begins stroking its head. D-10293 later sets SCP-1616 down and begins observing. No abnormal activity for 12 minutes. D-class. Doc, this, this thing is really cute and all, but can I leave now? No abnormal activity for 20 minutes. SCP-1616 is now moving back and forth along the length of the table. SCP-1616 pauses and, and sits on its rear. Its left cheek appears to expand in three times its size. D-10293 begins screaming loudly. 
D-10293's eyes, eye begins receding into the optical cavity. D-class, what the fuck? Oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god. D-10293 begins crying and banging on the floor to contain itself. D-class, get it the fuck away from me. Get it the... Get... Oh fuck, please, why? D-10293's left eye is gone at this point. SCP-1616's jaw appears to retract and expand. SCP-1616 is observed pulling their respective eye out of its cheek, cleaning it, and nibbling on it for a few mo moments before placing it back in its mouth. An optical optic nerve is also visible attached to the eye leading into SCP-1616's mouth. And that's it. Bruh. Oh yeah, dude, I forget to mention 682 is afraid of the hamster. 682 is afraid of the hamster? Yeah, he's afraid of both the bunny and the hamster because they tried eating him. I see. So in other words, 682 is a brat who's in the war. It's it's Chew. Chew's the lizard. Six eight two is Chew confirmed. <laughs> Wait, does that mean that means Chew Chew has children? So we gave Chew illegitimate oh children. <laughs> oh dear God! Oh no! <laughs> You know what? Let's just move on from that line of thought. Yeah. Um. Like besides, like, I guess I I kind of question how this is a keter. Like, didn't it say that it can only grab things that it's seen? Yeah. Like. Literally, just like, like this seems like it would be more of a Euclid. Yeah. Like, like it's dangerous, but it's just like, I don't see, I don't see why it's. Oh, hey, Jerry. It's a keter. Hi. Uh, you're... For a moment, I had no idea why your name was that, and then I remembered last night. <laughs> uh, also, Jerry, we just got finished talking about uh, SCP-1616, a.k.a. Nibbles, the hamster. Oh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to figure out where to put it. Because it's not really a dangerous Keter. Or, it, like, I just saying it could be classified as Euclid, basically. Like... So, I would say... Okay, if we're gonna p place it, I would say probably certain group or or like what is the like lowest one? Only uh, one. Yeah, maybe that one. Like in terms of like only, danger level, only 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 affects one person at a time, probably. So yeah. Well, I mean, there there was that instant of like. That really unfortunate elephant getting fucked over, but <laughs> yeah, the baby elephant getting me eaten. <laughs> like ultimately speaking, like I just I I don't see how this oh, thing's a keter. Like it's yeah, like it it can it can quite literally nibble at the box. That's that's all it can really do. Wait, I just realized how how much shit would that hamster do? have to go through if it ate an entire baby elephant. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> the poor uh, D-class have to uh, clean it. <laughs> uh, Jerry, we're getting echo from you. Um, I literally just joined? Yeah, we're we were getting echo from you. Anyway, so... so yeah, I, I think in just one works. Yeah. 
That poor D class, though. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I wonder how that felt like getting your egg dra dragged inside of your own skull. Uh, the eye socket actually has some of the most sensitive nerves uh, in the human body, so it's actually quite possibly one of the most painful things that can be conceived of. Like, uh, thanks to my uh, long history of looking into uh, true crime, I've heard of cases of people having their eyes taken out and then, uh, oh, like... Like literally, just the air rushing onto the onto the exposed sockets. In one instance, a person described it as like someone poured acid onto their face. Damn. Like they those nerves are incredibly sensitive. Or was it the? No, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't air rushing onto the nerves. It was uh, them having water rush onto the nerves. But but still, like it's it's going to be. It really is probably one of the most painful conceivable things. And the hamster yeah. just took the eyeball out like it was nothing. Yeah, the hamster <laughs> just wanted to have it. Like that's that's the sad part. The hamster just wanted to have a little snack. Like he. Like, you can't blame the hamster. You just want to nibble. Alright, everyone ready for the next SCP? Mm. E. Next SCP. SCP 1621. Also known as a useful plant. Okay. SCP-1621 is an invasive, flowering mimic vine similar to Rhizophora tetracoccus, Raphosia, Viola, and Passiflora. While no specimen of SCP-1621 has ever exhibited sentience or sapience of any sort, all sp specimens mimicked albeit perfectly Luckily, indigenous species, which originally le led to subclassifications of SCP-1621, note, however, that only one genotype of SCP-1621 has been identified. All variants have merely adaptive camouflage. Analysis of chemical biohazards of SCP-1621 follows. The flowers, roots, and vines of SCP-1621 utilize chlorine, trifluoride, in place of sap or nectar. Right. Oh! Chlorine trifluoride vaporizes at 13 degrees Celsius, is colorless, and smells sweet. SCP-1621 must fertilize itself to expand the colony. The sweet scent of the chlorine trifluoride attracts insects and animals, which at 800 ppm is lethal within 15 minutes, and incapacitating far sooner. SCP-1621 sap and nectar are corrosive, toxic, hy hypergolic on contact, and most combustible materials without a spark or ignition source react violently when in contact with water, ice, or silicon. silicon containing compounds. Uh, it's capable, incompatible with oil, grease, reducing agents, organic compounds, fuels, and combustibles, and most metals and metal oxides. Cannot catch fire and so cannot be neutralized by ignition and decomposes from into chlorine. Chlorine and hydrogen Chlorine gases if exposed to temperatures higher than 220 degrees Celsius. Disposal can be safely managed by exposing equal parts sap or nectar with kerosene and collecting the resulting vapors for the distillation into compact elements. 
The root structures of, of SCP-1621 are approximately doubled in area as those it mimics. If provided with nutrients from carrion, it'll, it'll also extrude vines in all directions at a visible as a space and continues until the carrion, carrion is dissolved in the nutrient supply exhausted. <laughs> Provided with enough carrion, at SCP-1621 expands at the rate of redacted miles per, per hour. Stationary objects are enveloped slowly during vertical movement, but typically one or more instances of chlorine trifluoride reaction have reduced stationary objects to rumble, scrap, or ash. Once a vine can do without overlapping with the, with the host stalk, it penetrates the soil and begins to sprout, creating a new stalk, expanding the colony in all but the most and arid climates, SV-1621 wipes out all other plant life around the colony by way of corrosion and through chlorine trifluoride reactions triggered by rainfall. There you go. What's that? That is it. That's the useful plant. Wait, they called it the Useful Plant? Yeah, that's his nickname. <laughs> okay. Um. I mean, it's... My first inclination is to basically call it the, the Carp of Plants. It just gets into a place and it fucking destroys everything. Yeah. Um. You could technically also call it the snakehead of plants because it sounds like the only way to really kill it is with fire. Did you say snakehead? Yeah, the snakehead fish. No, oh, it's a that's a little less uh, applicable because snakehead, like at the very least, uh, in like western United, western and eastern United States. I'm pretty sure they've been uh, classified as naturalized now. I'm pretty positive. Last I checked, they aren't natural in any way, and they cause horrible damage. No, like they yeah. have become naturalized, as in they were an invasive species that has been acclimatized to the environment. You mean they're not wiping out everything they touch now? I mean... I I'd assume that that's a part of why they're called naturalized. Oh. Hmm. Let me look that up very quick because I did not hear about that. It, it might have been, it might be specific regions of the United States, but I, I know I heard about like certain snakeheads getting naturalized. I tried to look up snakehead fish, and the first thing that Google suggested was invasive. Well, you could look up snakehead fish naturalized. So, yeah, rather than uh, finding snakeheads being talked about as naturalized, there's something saying what a tropical freshwater fish is and what is a snake head fish but there's nothing about it being uh naturalized i mean i got this from like i'm getting i got this information from avian j like it's a youtuber that specifically talks fish oh snake head fish naturalized why aren't I finding it? Is Google just an asshole? Yes. Let's see. Uh, files dot 
dnr.state. Uh, Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Classification Summary of Invasive Species. Why is this going down a rabbit hole about Snakehead? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's back out of this rabbit hole. What we were talking about was a plant that, that is very destructive. It eats bugs, but it will eat animals. It will eat people. It will eat other plants. Well, it won't eat the other plants. It'll melt to the other plants. Yeah, the only it, places it, it cannot survive is arid climates and fire. Yeah, I I'd say this is an easy continent. Yeah. I agree. Imagine, if, imagine if this was put in the Amazon. Oh don't God! That. Don't no, just no, just. No. Uh. Never. Snake head. Okay, so in the... Yeah, maybe it's just in Minnesota. Okay, I'm, this is not one of the Keters, but not far after Gibble... Uh, not Gibbles, Nibbles. Gibbles. There's a... An, an SCP that's nicknamed Gilded Urinal. Sounds about right. Okay, uh, so from what I'm seeing, it's some uh, some snakeheads in some parts of the United States have become considered naturalized. Okay. Which makes a bit more sense. So they are destructive buggers, but given the right circumstances, they can blend into an ecosystem fairly quickly. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like the European. Suspicious, because the last time I heard anything about them was years ago. It was a special yeah. about how they're destroying every fish wildlife area everywhere and killing yeah. all the fish. Yeah, I like ironically enough, one of the good examples of uh, uh like but, invasive species becoming naturalized in terms of fish that also inhibits one of the most effective manners of dealing with the carp invasion is the fact that uh in most places in I think like mid to eastern United yeah. States, European carp have been considered naturalized, which means that now we don't have the option to do what Australia is doing by releasing carp herpes <laughs> in into the waters and then that kills off the fish. We don't have that option here because carp her herpes would uh kill both the Asian carp that we want to get rid of as well as the European carp. 